Hi, I'm Lori, and um, I'm a nurse by trade, uh, so I am not um, a seamstress. And uh, we've been RVing for about 10 years. We've had our current RV about seven, and we unfortunately had the problem uh, with the flex steel material. And because we didn't want to spend $8,000 to get everything recovered, uh, we decided to try it ourselves. Um, and as promised, uh, we said we would make a video of us taking um, the seat apart, uh, sewing it back together and putting it back on the seat. So I hope you find this useful. Um, I have to apologize. Uh, as I look at these videos, uh, my hair was a mess. And I think all I did uh, for two days was eat, sleep and reupholster. Um, I will put um, a list of our material in the uh, comment section down below. We're going to start by taking the arms off. This was, I found one video on this online. So what you do is you take it and you push it in while you're turning it. Okay, good. Film. You film me? Okay, it'll do that. And it'll continue to go. I had to lock it in. I won't be able to walk it in any other direction. No, oh, there, there's a little groove. So here's your circle, and there's your groove. So you're pushing it so that it gets past there, and then it'll pop out right in there. There we go. Got it. Number two. <laughs> and you can see that little knobby right there. Do you see it? That's what you're getting out of that groove. So you have to push that back far enough so you can get it out okay so this one captivated me for a while i tried to pry this off and i think there's one or two youtube videos out there that show you how to get it off so this is a sticker at least it is for us so you kind of have to get something sharp but strong enough that you can get down below it and then you can peel it up and save it because you can reuse it it's got a good sticker on it so I'm gonna pull that right up. Try not to touch too much of it, and it's up. I'm just gonna set this aside so we can use it later. And you can see there's two screws. Can you see the two screws right here and here? So two screws, you'll take those two screws, um, just pop it off. The two screws out, and this is just gonna lift right off. I'm gonna set this aside with the two screws. And the sticker, and we'll keep going. So now you have some decisions to make. I'm not a seamstress. <laughs> so I decided to not piece these two pieces together and just to take this whole piece off as one. And I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and this decorative trim, um, again, I'm not that great a seamstress. Uh, I have basic sewing skills, so I decided to leave that off. But if you like that look, um, you'll have to keep that in mind as you take this apart. So let's talk about taking it apart yeah. now. So here's what we need to talk about, making sure you can put it back together. Because once you do this, there's no, there's no backing off now. <laughs> You've got, you're committed, okay? So what I tried to do was mark like every... Place. like I want to know what the middle of this is and this is not going to come out so you're going to have to work around it but that's okay we can work around that so I want to mark the middle of the front and the middle of this other piece of material because this is a different piece so when I go to put this together I know where those two parts should meet okay I'm going to do the same on the back side and it doesn't have to be exact because by the time you get sewing it's not going to be exact so you're gonna mark the middle and the middle. And at least it's gonna give you something uh, to go by. Okay, my part right here uh, didn't come out that great. Um, but it's not gonna matter because it's gonna be smushed right up against the seat. So even if it's not, I mean, even theirs isn't perfect. You can see like this is a long ways from that. And I'm guessing when we look at the other, it's gonna be even in a different position, so. Um, let's start taking it apart. Well, first, before we take it apart, you see this piece right here? We're going to mark. This is, this is where it should end, right here, okay? 
on this piece of material and the same with this. And you can see this piece is stitched over to give a good edge. So when we take this apart, we're going to want to mark that seam as well uh, so we can duplicate it. So essentially now <laughs> you're going to need a really good seam ripper. Um, I found this at Joanne's Fabrics or Walmart. I'm not sure, but it's a good one uh, with a nice grip because you're going to be doing a lot of seam ripping. Um, and I, like I said, I'm not a seamstress, so there's probably easier ways to do this than what I'm showing you, but uh, this is how I did it, not knowing much. So what you're going to want to do is get down in here and kind of find one of the stitches without ripping the cloth, because this cloth is actually going to become your pattern. So once you, and it's scary the first time you did this, do this, right? Because you know there's no turning back. But, I mean, the alternative, if something goes wrong, is you get it covered. And so if you're thinking you're going to get it covered anyway, I mean, might as well see if you can do it yourself. Because I probably spent not even a tenth of what recovering would cost. And I know if anything happens, now I can fix it. So you see, this is the tedious part. Once you get it going, though, um, it'll start to pull apart. So we're gonna come back in a second when I've got a little more of this ripped out, okay? You can see we've got, got it, and you can also see this halo fabric service. So um, that's the fabric um, that is no good, it's from halo. Yes, I remember. <laughs> I mark every junction. <laughs> Not just with a mark, but you better put something on there, right? So I'm going to put an A, if I can see it. Uh, this fabric's in bad shape, so an A. I'm putting an A here, because once you pull this all apart, you're not going to know exactly where your A's were. Like, was that the line that matched that line, right? So back here on this line in the middle, I'm going to put a B. Right, and I'm going to put a corresponding B right here. And this is the back, so I'm actually going to write on this back. And I'm going to say out here, outside, anything you can mark that's going to help you put the pieces back together. Trust me, when we get over to the, the seat itself, there's going to be so many pieces that if you don't have every junction point marked, uh, it gets really difficult to figure out um, what goes where. So putting a few more like on the curves, just, I just had a hard time the last time. Um, like figuring out where to start it and making sure I was in the right spot. So the more spots you have to go by, um, the better off you're gonna be. Okay. And if you get so right here and here you'll see there's some velcro that holds this material in place on the inside arm around where it turns so when you find it if yours has this just kind of like press on it and hold it otherwise you're going to rip it uh, right out of this foam it's just glued in place and i i did that on the first arm that i took off this being my third arm <laughs> i kind of learned so uh, i'll just leave that there and I leave all of this vapor barrier in place too, on all the parts. Too far. The other thing you're going to want to do. <laughs> so this is the left arm. Um, so I'm going to write right on it. Left arm drivers. And the arms are not the same, but you could always uh, reverse the patterns if you wanted to not do this on the other one. You know, just um, flip it upside down, and I'll show you that when we go to cut. Um, but I like to make sure I know what's outside, what arm I'm dealing with, or what part I'm dealing with, uh, because I plan on actually keeping this and having it be my pattern in case I ever want to do this again. And, um, you know, something gets damaged, because essentially what we're doing is we're creating a cover. And it's going to slip on, just like the ones that I guess they provided people with early on that was not an option for us. Um, so this will be my pattern. So we'll keep going.
I'm gonna take this part in a second, but let me show you this part. So this front piece, um, I'll show you how it comes off. It's really easy. All this is is they've um, cut an X uh, in the material, which we will do when we go to place our piece over it. And then they just tuck it under, okay? So um, you can pull back a little bit if you want on the foam. Um, but this just essentially comes up and over. And you can see um, they pretty much cut an X in the material. Looks like they cut a little extra out. And remember, as we've sat in these and we've used them, this leather has probably stretched a bit. So the other thing uh, before I take this apart that I'm going to talk about, if you want to zoom over here, is um, a lot of people just take their seat out. Uh, they go, they get them recovered. Uh, but for me, I don't want to deal with the hassle of taking this out. Uh, plus, if I don't finish it before our next camping trip, we can always throw something over it and he can still drive. <laughs> um, so if you're in a campground and you're going to be doing this, you can leave the seat in place. It is possible uh, to create these covers leaving the seat in place in case you need to drive, uh, and then just um, putting it all together while it's still uh, in its location. It does make some things a little more challenging, uh, but it does save you the step of taking it out. They made this, they put some like kind of marks, they, they did a little cut here, and it's kind of, it kind of indicates where to line it up with. So you can see like the, the seam right there comes right there. So if you just make a mark there, it'll help you line it up with that notch. You're going to know that notch. So let's just put an X, a little tiny X because it's easy to make. And we're going to put a little tiny X right here. Okay. Um, that way you, you, you know where to start this material because you're going to need to know that. And we're actually going to, when before we're done, kind of mark the pattern because making these curves so they fit right can be a little bit challenging. Okay, so just a few things. Um, I recycle everything. <laughs> so I'm actually gonna rip the stitches out and I'm gonna take out that piece of um, Velcro and we're gonna reuse it. I'm gonna put it right in the same spot on the new piece of material we cut. So right now you can see that this, so I marked the edge, right, where that goes. And you can see most of the time they've put notches in places, okay? And so, here is where it's going to line up, right at that notch. And I marked on the outside G. So I want to make sure I know that that is the G. Okay. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about is if you decide, so when you go to sew this all back together, this is going to be the outside. You always got to keep track of the outside. So when you sew this, if you are putting this trim on, um, and in it, you'll see there's, I forget what this is called, this little plastic thing. Um, but that, this is the part that's going to show, this is the part that's going to show, would line up like right here where your seam is. And then your other piece, the right side would face, so right sides together. So you would just need to make sure. That's why I didn't do it. It's a lot of right sides and things, directions to keep track of. Uh, plus there's a lot of sewing um, to get this together. This is going to be my pattern. If you wanted to keep this fancy little extra piece, you would have to rip all those stitches. And sew those two pieces together first. Um, and it looks like they did a double stitch. Nope, they did a single stitch. You can do a double stitch if you want to get fancy. Um, so you could do one stitch and then just go right beside it and do a second. Um, but because this is my pattern, I now have to take out the stitches around here. Otherwise, my pattern uh, won't be big enough, right? So I've got to take those. And this, the reason it's like this is this is the edge um, that shows. So you don't want it to be just a rough edge. So we'll pull those out. Other thing I want it for those who don't normally sew um, is that you can see they've made little cuts around the circles. So any place where you're coming around a circle, 
um, you'll want to make some cuts uh, to allow the fabric to kind of bend around the circle. So it gives it just a little more uh, ability to curve by cutting these. Normally, not. I think they cut this before they sewed it, um, but sometimes when you're sewing, you can just cut some like little pieces and you can see that's on a corner. So on most of the corners, you're gonna see they cut a couple little notches and it allows uh, the fabric to bend particularly in high stress points. So that's right where the, the driver's arm goes. So this is our left arm piece. And you can see where I've marked center and where I've marked center. And then down here, you can see my little spots where I've marked. There's my G, there's my F. And you can see when we cut this piece, it actually we're just gonna cut it like this and then we'll cut that little hole out. And that's the hole that the little um, part from the arm sticks out. It's marked as well. I do have front and back marked, but it's kind of easy because <laughs> that's the front where we have to make that X. And remember when you cut, you can always cut more, you can't cut less. So um, I, I start with a smaller X and if that's not big enough to get it over that piece, I cut a little more, uh, trying to be careful not to cut too much. And this has pretty good stretch to it. I'm using Sunbrella type fabric. It doesn't have as much stretch to it as this leather does. So I, I sometimes have to cut just a little bit more. I told you I'm not used doing the trim, but you know what? <laughs> this stuff is expensive. So I take it out and you never know when we're gonna do another project um, where you might need it. So pull it out. And uh, the sling chairs in particular, you can use this kind of stuff. This probably isn't um, big enough, but there's lots of things you can use this for. I'm actually um, marking all the pieces. So there's one, two. This is, a, this is just, a, there's only three pieces to an arm. So uh, we're really lucky on that one. Um, but you do have uh, this part that we still need to rip the stitches out of and save. And I, I say that right to the end so I don't misplace it. So I'm gonna put um, left driver's arm. I think there's over 100 parts <laughs> to put together before we're done. And so it's good to keep track of them all if you're gonna keep it as a pattern. So there's that. Okay, so now that we know this is just going to be a pattern, um, you have to like take a deep breath and go, okay, I'm gonna write all over this. Um, I have some more writing to do, but I thought I'd show you um, what I've done. So I take a letter and I mark all the junction points. Uh, so I will know exactly where the points come back together because by the time we take this apart, there's like 30 pieces just to that one thing. And I mark what the piece is. So the top row on the driver's side, and you could probably leave that whole piece together as the whole left side and same on the right in the middle. Uh, but I did take it apart just because of the curves. Uh, I marked like when where the skirting ends when we uh, finish sewing it. I marked um, where I need to uh, take off the Velcro um, so that can attach to the back there. And just so you know, all of these are lined with this material. Uh, when I take it apart, I'm actually going to reuse this material to be the backing on mine. Um, we're going to have to take out screws. And I just continued um, the letters all the way around. So if it's a junction point, uh, they're marked with the same letters. I say what the part is. And I did this all the way around. One of the things you need to decide on early early on as you're doing this is what's left and right. So for me, I, I always think of it as the driver's sitting in the seat, so my left is my left. So this will be the left-hand side because you're gonna need that information. So like right now, I'm gonna write left side top seat. But it's really the bottom row, so, but bottom row. And I'll do the same because these pieces are all going to look the same when you take them apart. Top row, 
of seat driver because when I, I want to make sure my parts because that seat over there is a little different passengers so if I ever need to make another one or I want to make a cover let's say I want to know what pattern I have um, up here you can see they actually puckered it uh, to give a nice curve um, so I actually kind of started with the trying to figure out where the front of the pucker was and back of the pucker and then I measure the distance of how much it has to go down to because when I take this apart that piece of material is going to straighten out so let's say it's four and a half inches I know then I've got to bring it down to three and a half by like putting a little stitch in and pulling uh, that's how I did it the last time didn't come up quite as good as theirs but it worked and and it gave me the curve uh, so mark more than you think you need to mark um, because once this is all apart you're gonna think where does this start where does this end what part goes to what I need to mark back here but you can see this piece right here actually goes and tucks around this so what we're gonna do is we're gonna so you have to figure out where to start so I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna take this piece of the skirting off. There's nothing uh, other than the stitches holding it on. That's gonna allow me to get up underneath here. And there's actually hog rings um, holding some poles so it pulls the seat uh, cushion tight. So we'll get that piece off. That'll give us some room to work underneath there and get that off. We will need to take this off. Um, I took off one part already, the little piece that, um, so you can recline. <laughs> uh, that was brute force. Uh, it just popped forward. Uh, save the piece, you'll have to pop it back on. Uh, so I'm gonna start with this piece. Okay, so we just, I, I pull a little pressure down and just get the stitches. It's amazing how easy it comes apart. <laughs> uh, just keep doing that. Oh, I might have to take that apart. I lied. So we'll take that part um i'll get a screwdriver and come back really figure out what's happening here so this is pretty tight this doesn't even like come out but put your hand up under there you can push it out from the wood um so you can see this is hooked um to the cable this is the release so um I, i'm gonna get a silver sharpie <laughs> Stop. At any point you think, God, I hope I remember which way that goes back together. So you stop right there. Uh, so you will need, in addition to your black Sharpie, a silver Sharpie. These are always great to um, write on um, black. If not, use some electrical tape, bright color electrical tape, and mark the top. So I'm just going to write top, and I'm going to put an F up here for front. Okay. Um, that way, when I go to put it back in, I'll know which is front and back, top, bottom. So I've marked around the Velcro. And you can see in here, um, what we'll do is I got to mark a few things so I remember. So here, what I've got to do is I've marked that that's where I stopped sewing, uh, but that piece actually gets sewn um, to here, right? Uh, this part gets sewn front to front, front, you know, the two front pieces uh, together, and I'll show you that when I do it. I will rip out all of this seam, and then we'll, we'll um, take this piece out and save it. So we don't want to write on this, right? So, uh, fronts together and so here's the hard part mm -hmm. if you leave the seat in place but I don't want to deal with all the electrical parts of those seats is you kind of have to get up underneath there so right now he's cutting those hard rings that are holding that pole uh, that holds the top cover down tight uh, so you have to get in there and, and snap them uh, the other things we did is um, that oh. the little part that I pulled out I had to take the screws out of I taped the screws in place so we don't miss okay them. here we go so now he's got um, it was actually so tight he had to just get some little, little um, wire cutters 
And he's going to get into there. Get that clip. Okay. Got it. Okay. So that's that's the hog ring yarn. And uh, we'll show you those later. If you haven't used hog rings before, uh, when you start doing furniture reupholstery, you're going to learn what a hog ring is. So you can see uh, this kind of scrap material. That's what they use to um, wrap around the bar underneath and then hog ring it tight. And I prefer to leave that on there. Um, but you can always use uh, some of the leftover material for that and just sew a piece on. So this holds it around the edge. And there's about 10 of them. And if you can't pop it off, if you pull the material up a little bit, it helps get it off. Good. So um, you can actually cut both of those ties, bring the clips off, and pull this off, but I like to rip the seams when it's on it because it gives a little tension. It's easier than if you're just holding the material in your lap. Scary the first time you do this. So I'm gonna finish coming up this side. And whenever you see something like this, where you, you see it's there's something in there, right? So I know what's in here because I did my other seat, but it may be different. So like when I did the couch, it can be a fabric pull. We actually pull down and hook around some metal and, and tighten it with hog rings. But I know that's not the case in here. Um, number one, because I've done it before. Number two, because there's no place to grab it to pull it with a hog ring. So as you're taking yours apart, just go slow um, and you'll figure out what's behind there. So what you'll see here... <laughs> is they actually um at the end of the of the trim um they left this piece that, and that's the fabric pull so what i'm gonna do um is actually take a piece of this i'm gonna cut it off and um we're gonna use it down there so what i'm gonna do is uh, right here, here where, the fabric, where the fabric pull is i'm gonna put a mark and remind myself that that's where the fabric pull. Goes, okay? Because trust me, there's a lot of pieces. As you can see, there's the hole where the arm goes in. Here's the hole where the arm goes in. Um, and you can see they've just created a slit here. I'm not going to use the... the um, the material as my template for that. What I'll do is I'll get this all together. I'll slip this on, I'll get it in place, and then I'll feel for the hole because you can feel it. And then I'll cut the hole and I'll keep cutting it till I know that it's big enough. And sometimes you just have to try it out with the arm. Uh, you'll just need to cut it once it's in place, just in case things don't quite line up the same. I would wait to cut that hole after you pull your new cover on. So Here's that curved part, that little pucker that I told you about. And you can see that they've sewn a piece in there. So I'm gonna have to take that piece off. But I don't know what stitch they use to create that pucker. But what I'll know is I'm gonna measure from the start to the end of that piece, right? And I'm gonna mark here and here. And I'm gonna know how long it is. And then I'm going to have this piece marked, and then I'll know how long it is without that piece in there. And that is how much I'll have to pucker it up by. Um, so maybe somebody with some sewing knowledge can tell us how that's done. I'm not sure. I did Google it. I couldn't figure it out. So the first time I did this, I was captivated to find out what was um, holding this in. So in here is actually, if you put your hand back in the pull, and yours could be totally different. There's all different styles. You can feel there's a plastic piece. You have to tip it forward and pull it out. So my machine, and this happened on the couch too when I did it. My machine can't sew through plastic. So what I'll do is I'll keep this piece of material right here, and I'll just take the seam off here. Okay. 
and then I'll sew it back up. So I'm gonna mark top. You can see uh, the way the seat is built is kind of hollowed out right here. And you can see right here on this front piece, there's this cushioning. So what's gonna end up happening <laughs> is I actually have to take out all this material right here, this padding, and I will sew it uh, to my material. Otherwise, um, it won't sit right. So that takes a bit of time and it's a lot of layers to sew through, um, but my machine was able to do it. But that's gonna go away um, and we're gonna keep this. So, um, I, I wanted to keep my pocket and I know my material isn't quite as thick as this, so I actually will cut two of these um, and put them back to back and I'll have a nice, nice piece of material. Um, and I'm in here is a little bit of cushioning. Uh, so I'll save that cushion as well. Uh, and we'll put it back in there, um, the pocket on the one that I did. Um, and it's, it's holding up great. I just took a bunch of stuff out of the back and it's as tight as the other one. Uh, so we, I doubled it. I think it's actually thicker. And uh, so we're gonna take this apart. So this will stay with the top. Uh, this will become part of that uh, bottom. Well, actually it's gonna stay with the top. Right, that's gonna stay with the top. So this has to stay with the top. That's the hard part. <laughs> is you have to keep track of how it's gonna go back together. And because this is gonna go on and it's not attached to these. So you have to kind of think it through before you take it apart. So this will stay with my top and will get sewn on to the top for when I put it together. And this part of the skirting uh, will stay with the bottom and, and be going on when I put the bottom on. Okay, so I think, um, so this is the piece um, that goes right here and I'm not gonna put it back in place. I can't even remember which way it goes. I'll have to look at the other one like that. Um, and what I did was just put a screwdriver down in here and just tap behind it and then we pull, pull, pull and it pops off. When you put it back together, you're just gonna tap it back into place. Um, so you'll need to take this off. <laughs> There's no other way um, to get this off of here until you do that. And we can't take this off until we take this off. This is a bit of a pain. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this piece off and then take this out and then we can pull the seat cushion off. Um, and I'll probably take this apart inside. Um, so our next thing, so we've already disconnected it from the back so we can. it's ready to come off that way. Um, I have a few clips I'll take off uh, but next seam, then we're going to take these screws out, slip this piece off, uh, and then we're going to get this off. And I'm going to show you, we ran into a problem. Um, I don't know that you necessarily will. I watched a video online of somebody else who got uh, just the seat covers um, from Flex Steel uh, way back, and um, they didn't have this problem. But when we get there, I'll show you what I ran into. Um, I was able to get through it. Uh, but just be aware as you're taking things apart, just do it slowly, realizing that how your seat is put together may look different, even though it's flex steel, um, based on what RV you're in. So I'll be back in a yeah. minute. So I was wrong. Um, I remember from the last time, uh, this piece right here is actually um, under this. So this is screwed to a plate back here. And until I take that off, I can't, can't get this off either. So we're going to take this off. So I got this unscrewed, pulled out, basically. I can push it out through here. Um, but this is a bracket that now it's got, it's got some uh, bolts up in there. So I have to take those out before I can take this off. Um, so I'm going to get that off. Um, then we're going to get this seat cushion off. So this is the bracket um, that was holding that bottom cushion on. So just and just in case you forget which way it goes, always mark top. Uh, the same with this. Mark what's top. If you don't, and you get it upside down, you move your seat back, it's going to go forward, and 
Uh, so just, you don't want that to happen. Uh, so mark the top of that because it doesn't look any different left or right. So now we're going to take the bottom off and I thought it would just slip off like the top, but I learned on the other one it didn't. So we'll see what happens over here. Um, I'm guessing. Okay. It's going to uh, be the same and this is going to be on here tight. And what I'm going to do is pull this up. So you can see when we go to put this on, it's going to be pretty snug. And I should have it pretty free to come up. So this is what happened the last time too. I get to here and it doesn't come up. You're like, hmm. What the heck? So that's when I found out that they glued it to the bottom cushion, probably so it doesn't slip and slide around. And when I put this back together, um, we're going to put glue again um, to hold it in place. Uh, we'll use some 3M. But, and, and this does kind of make a sticky mess for when you go to sew. But we'll get it up. Okay, so I I've actually think I found the best way to do this. And I, I really don't think this is going to cause a problem. Because it happened over there. But you're going to have to sew here too. So it, that makes it a little tough, tougher. So put a little tension and push down. Right? And just a little bit at a time. And uh, it seems to be the best way to do it. I have a feeling <laughs> it's going to stick more as I get to the middle because that's where we've sat more. Okay, I've got um, the pieces all cut out and all lined up. And you can see that. Um, this is why it's important to put all the labels in place so you know where things join back together. I've got a few things more to take apart, like the skirting. I've pretty much um, ripped all the seams so that it can come loose from there. And I um, ripped all the seams on the padding, and so my piece will go on that padding, and then I'll sew a line right across here. I got a little bit of the foam, um, did come off where it was glued down. I did set it back down, it seems to be fine. It will settle back into the spot it came out of. And when I put this back down, I will put some of that 3M contact spray uh, to help stick it in place. And that's what I did with the other. Okay, it's at this moment that you don't want to panic. So here are all the parts, except for the felt that goes on the back and the cushion stuff that will get sewed onto these pieces. But this is all the pieces for one seat, all laid out on my material. So just one tip, well, a few tips. First, make sure that if you have your material face up, you have all of your pieces face up because you, otherwise they're gonna be in reverse. And then um, go with the grain of the of the material. So here's a, here's the thing: if you pick a pattern, it's going to be more difficult. Um, but you know, if it's a vertical piece, have it go vertical. If it's horizontal, have it go horizontal because there is a grain to the material. So here they are. So now what I'm going to slowly do is put all the pieces, like start pinning them down. You can use weights. Um, and start cutting them out and put them into piles of seat, back, arm. Um, and after we get that all done, we'll start putting pieces together. So here are all the pieces all cut out for the bottom. I showed you how I had them lined up, ready to cut out. I've cut them all out. That took some time. So it took me probably an hour and a half to cut them out for all the pieces. Um, because I didn't iron, the leather doesn't really iron, uh, so you have to kind of pin that down where, where seams are. Um, so they're all cut up. So now what I'm going to start with is to do uh, the pieces that have to have something special done to them. So right now I'm going to insert this into this piece. Um, so it came out of here. And this is actually the back of the cushion. So I've, I've labeled it cushion, so I know where it is. And I know this is where the hog rings go. So this is what's gonna pull on the back of that seat um, down around that back bar. 
Uh, so I'm going to sew along here. I've measured, um, and we'll give you a list of all of the stuff that we use for our equipment. Um, but I measured this uh, seam, and I'm going to sew it. There is a special foot, but I'm not going to insert it for just sewing in two of these. Right now I'm working on the skirting. It's really important when you have your pattern, um, when you take it off, to keep track. So this part I had to sew, this just this one section <laughs> with the right sides facing each other and then you turn it back around. This is gonna get sewn uh, up to the cushion seat. So I don't have to finish that edge. But right now what I'm doing is folding this over um, and creating a nice edge. So this is what it's gonna look like at the base. So it'll create a nice edge with none of that um, back showing. So we're gonna do the two sides next and come up around that corner. Um, and then this piece will be done. So you can see at the bottom here, I have a nice edge. I still have to do that to this side. Um, the top edge I won't finish. That's what's going to hook to the cushion. But you need to write all of these instructions on your piece that you're taking off so you know exactly what has to be sewn where. What I've done is I took the, the cushion, that was the seat, the one that does not look so great on the back, and I've just put um, the piece of material over the top with the right side up, and I've sewn all the way around the edge. So what I'm gonna do now is flip it over to the bad side and I'm gonna sew right down across here. It's a lot of material to go through the machine, but I'll just push down as I go. I was able to do it with the other. Uh, once that's done, um, we're gonna move on to actually putting the seat together. I've sewn, sewn those two side pieces of the skirting uh, with that felt behind them. And we've got the pole at the back ready to go. So now it's just putting a whole bunch of pieces together and I'll show you my progress. So you can see how I've laid out my um, pattern. Now I've got the cushion over here and I've got that front piece um, with the, the, the front very part of the cushion. Um, and I've put them face to face, so right sides together, and now I'm gonna sew across. Once I do that, then I'll repeat that with the right side and then the left side. And then the cushion part of the seat will be together. And then we'll start adding the sides of the cushion after that. So I need to iron these pieces still. Um, but what I wanna show you is, okay, see how it's gonna end up like this? This is where it takes some thinking. It's gonna right sides together. So you're gonna hook it like this. So it's gonna create a curve, okay? So it's gonna, this is gonna curve out that way. So we're gonna start pinning it but then I may have to just start feeding it in a curve as it goes. Um, so it, this is where I always get stumped. You just kind of have to look at it, put it in the right place, flip it over to make sure the right sides are together. So this is where we're at. Kind of looks messy right now, but you can see the bulk of the cushion is sewn together. I'll pull straight when I put it on. And now what's gonna happen is I'm gonna sew those two side pieces together, those two front pieces together, and then these two side pieces together. And then I'm gonna connect those when they'll become three pieces and I'll connect them together. And then we'll sew them all the way around this skirting. Then we will sew on I mean, all the way around this um, center part, and then we'll sew the skirting on, and we're done. So I'm gonna get sewing. I still need to iron. Okay, so I've sewn the two pieces on this side, the two pieces in the front, and the two pieces on this side together. Now we have three pieces. I'm gonna sew those three pieces together, and then, I'm gonna need help because it becomes a lot to hold. I'm gonna sew it to that center part. And then after we're done with that, we're gonna sew on the skirting. So we're getting close. <laughs> you can see I've sewn those three pieces together and um, I ironed. <laughs> and now what I have to do, 
because I have to sew that onto that base so it's going to wrap around it. So with all the cushion and everything else it's getting to be quite heavy uh, so I'm going to do a little bit of pinning then I'm going to have my husband come in and help hold the bulk as I sew around it. So very soon we're going to have most of the base done and then we just have to just uh, add on the skirting. Okay, so I ran into a little snag. This chair is a little different than the other one. So I thought I was just going to connect it at the bottom, but I don't. I have to go up. So I use one of these to measure exactly how far up I have to go. And I went off the pattern to figure out how far up I had to go on the, on the um, thing. So I measured it because what's going to happen is this part's going to go down around the base and get clipped and then this will hang down over so it hides everything. What are you doing? I'm going to try to explain um, where I'm at. So right now I have the back of the seat portion um, laid out and then below that I have the skirting which I've already uh, sewed the felt onto. And you can see I have marked um, little lines right across there. Um, that is so I can go by it um, to put the skirting on. So I'm allowing for a half inch seam allowance. So what I did was I referred to my pattern over here. And you can see this lower half that's going to stick down is where it's going to fold around the bar and clip on. And then this is the line where the skirting will sew. I've sewn my back pocket. I made it double thick just to give it some stability. I sewed that little piece of cushion that I took out of the old one on. This is the side that will be facing out. So what I need to do is it's all going to get sewn together here. It'll end up in this position like this, okay? So I have to flip it over to sew the right sides together. So this will actually end up lining up and I'll put that one, one stitch right across this. So there's the pocket. Once I stitch across here, the right sides together, this will fold up. I don't know if that makes any sense or not. Took me a while to think it through, um, but that's gonna get sewn together here in just a minute. I didn't film putting the back cushion together, but it's very similar to putting the seat together. So you just um, lay it all out. And I've got a picture here where you can see, uh, I put the pieces in place and then duplicate that with my parts. And then we start sewing them together just like we did the base. If you remember, uh, the seat back cover has um, an edge around the top that's puckered, uh, where it goes over the top. Um, so what I did for the driver's seat is take a piece of elastic, the length of what I wanted it to be puckered down to, I stretched it into place, pinned it, and sewed it, um, and then allowed it to, to go back into the shortened version. So I cut it the length, of what you want it to end up, stretch it out uh, to the length of the material and it will pull it in. And you just stitch it up and it made a nice, uh, nice pucker. This is the alternative to pinning the whole thing. And I learned this from uh, the sale right guy who, if you haven't watched his videos, they're excellent. So they were doing a restoration of an Airstream um, camper. And uh, he has a video on there where he, uh, reupholsters the couch and that's that's what gave me the nerve to try it um, so I, I just put my thread in um, I ran out on my bobbin so instead of pinning I pinned where I wanted to start I matched up my little markers and now what I'll do is I'll just keep making sure that my edge my edges are together and then as I get to a curve you know I'll just go slow and I'll keep feeding it, right, so that, okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just keeping my edges together as I make this corner. Once you get through the corner, 
you don't have to do it quite so much. And you'll see once you straighten out that it kind of is easy. But this keeps you from having to pin it the whole way. So if you have some corners to go around, I find this easier because if you pin it, you end up with a bunch of puckers. And it saves you a ton of time <laughs> from having to pin. I kind of pin the back so I know my target, so if I'm way off or not. So I'm coming around the corner again. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just kind of feed it in. Just keep doing that, right? Try to keep it straight so I don't get a pucker. Go a few. Feed it again. Just keep pushing it over to the edge. Straighten it out as you need to. Go a few inches. Keep doing it. And it's just going around that curve. And I'm almost through it. I'm trying to keep the same distance uh, from my seam allowance. Um, it's not perfect, but it's as good as, as if I had pinned it. So this whole project, what you're really doing is creating sleeves that can go over things, whether it's the back of the seat cushion or the seat. And this is the arm. So this is basically three pieces. You have this little piece right here. You have this big piece that goes all the way around. And then you have to sew this piece in. So lots of corners. I showed you some of that sewing. Um, and then the back part of mine has to have some pleats in it. And that is probably the hardest part of this whole project for me was getting the pleats so they look decent. What we're going to do is put this cover over. So just kind of line it up so that it's in the right spot. You can see this is supposed to go on the bottom and we just slide it on. I keep sliding it on. Now we are going to have to cut and I've started a little hole because it's hard to cut if you don't have a little starter hole. Um, enough space there so that you can um, Cut around the controls. So I'm going to just ease it back on. Back here, <laughs> you may have to push a little bit. So, you know, pushing down on the foam, keep pulling up, pushing down. And because it's going to be snug, you want it to be snug, right? <laughs> so, and you just push it in and uh, work it into place. And this is really how. You do every part. So now I gotta pull this little third piece out that's in here. This has a Velcro on it, so be careful <laughs> um, to, and this has to come down, um, and this is gonna come up. And it's really just about working this into the best spot. I'm off just a little bit right here, but you can see I'm getting it into place. Um, there's a piece back here that's going to have to be pulled up, right? And I'm not worried. I can put some fray check on this. Um, but this is going to get smooshed up against the seat anyway. Okay. I am going to have to put some fray check on that. I have my Velcro here, and I'm going to pull that up tight, stick it right to the Velcro and just tuck everything under. And um, now we're ready to cut some holes <laughs> and get everything attached. And I'll put a little fray check right there. If you're working with leather, um, you're not gonna have the same frayed edges. You could cut it a little bit bigger and finish the edge off, but um, I think we're okay. I can feel the indent here uh, where that emblem's gonna go. Uh, we'll get that attached, get it screwed back on, and I can, I can even feel the screw holes. Um, so last time I just put the piece in place, worked the screws in, screwed them in, put the label back on, um, and it all looked new. Next um, project will be um, to get that hole cut. So um, I can feel, oh, I'm right on the edge of that. I can feel um, the outline of that piece, that plastic piece. It goes all the way around here. So I'm gonna cut it, not that big. You just have to keep working it. Um, and then you'll push in and tuck it underneath the plastic. 
So you, I just keep cutting a little bit until I get it to the size I need it so that I can fit it over that. But you can see the top edge is here and the bottom edge is here in the outline. See, I've cut. And now I'm just working my way and tucking these pieces under, getting them out of there. And you could use a screwdriver or something and see if this is big enough to get that under. Um, if I had to, I could trim it just a little bit more. But you don't want to trim it too much. You know, you get just enough um, to get these over this and then tucked in. Um, and that's not going to go anywhere. I got a few more edges. I'm going to get a little screwdriver and tuck that in. But we're getting close. So what I did was when this was covering, I aimed for the corners with an X and then just push the excess material under there. So it's tucked in nice and tight. Uh, we've already lived uh, 60 days in the RV uh, with the other seat uh, covered and um, we sit in in the evenings and no issues with um, any of this coming loose or anything. So I feel pretty confident. What I've done is I, this just was a cover. Basically once I got this all sewn together, pulled it down over, you can see here. I reached up underneath with my hand, I, you know, before I get it all the way down, and I slip that piece of plastic back in that pulls it in here. And then what you do is you just work it down, right, until you get it all the way down. This piece right here is gonna get tucked under, and there's a bar down here, a metal bar, and that's gonna get secured to it uh, with hog rings. This piece right here, same thing. It's just a cover, right? So you can see, here's the, the thing. This all comes out, right? Okay, so this is just a cover. You've sewn all, it all together, and then you just kind of slip it into place, right? Wiggle it into place. Before I secure this, though, I'm gonna get some uh, spray glue uh, to uh, glue that back in. I think it's probably important. I don't know if it is or not, but that's how they did it. So that's how I'm going to do it. Um, and then this would get tucked in. And that piece again with the plastic in it is going to get hog ring to that same bar that the top one is. And we just tuck all these pieces back. So I think I'm trying to figure out <laughs> and I don't remember how I did it the last time. Um, but I'm trying to figure out what my next step is because I kind of want it exactly in its spot um, before I cut holes, I think. I don't know. i got to think about this. I'll let you know after I think. I can also go by the template because um, I, can't, I can't hook anything together until I start bringing these things through, right? So I have to cut a hole here, but I want it to, I want to make sure I'm in the right spot before I do that. So I think what I have to do first is glue this in place. Get this seat kind of situated. I'll probably pull this down, put my template up, figure out where the hole went, make my cut, get that piece in there to anchor it. Then this piece that hangs down goes around, goes around this middle, middle bar down here and it will just wrap around it and then we'll use those clips that you saw me taking off and that will hold that nice and tight. So we have a lot of tightening up to do. So what's gonna happen here is this piece, we'll secure the seat first, the seat portion. So these pieces are gonna get pulled back, right? That's gonna get wrapped around and, and those clips are going on it. These are gonna come back under here and get hog rings uh, to pull that snug. And then after we get the bottom part all secure, then we'll start on the top. And you can see this part with the finished edge right here is gonna cover all of this. So it's gonna come and it's gonna wrap around. It's gonna get hog ring back, hog ring down, and then we're gonna clip. And that will make all of this nice and snug. Done. You can see that Velcro you put on will actually come around and hook 
to the back skirting. Uh, and that holds that all nice and snug. So all of this gets covered up, looks nice and neat. So we're gonna start with the seat. We're gonna secure that down. And we're gonna start figuring out where to cut the holes. This is the scary part, because if you mess up, you gotta replace that piece. <laughs> so uh, wish me luck. I don't get too fancy here. I kind of find out where the groove is, get it in there. And I'm gonna take a leap of faith. <laughs> <laughs> those screws are going to go in. Uh, that's what happened the last time. So I'm hoping it happens again. So I just kind of do this, get it going, and I screw it in. Fabric starts pulling funny, just stop. <laughs> I'm going to stop right there. I think that's snug enough. And then I think I have enough glue left on here. I did before. So I'm just going to put that in. Yeah. Push it down. Piece goes back in. Not that we want Flex Steel's name on this after this whole incident, but it makes it look finished. And um, if you wanted to, you probably could cut your own sticker. If you have a Cricut, I could probably do that. Um, but for now, I'm doing this. So we're all set. This arm is done. This is what I'm going to use for um, gluing down that seat. So just a little bit on the cushion itself on, and um, on the cloth. And we'll wait the amount of time that the can says, and then we'll stick the two together. It's starting to get tacky, so I'm going to get it into place. I'm just going to line it up so that the seat and the cushion is lined up where the cushion goes. And I'm going to tuck it in. So hopefully that just gives it a little bit of sticking. And that's really all I'm going to do. Just kind of push it all down. Make sure it's connected. They say to spray in one direction and then the other direction and to spray both parts. Uh, I think they say a couple of minutes, but I just wait until it's nice and tacky to the touch. You know, I can use the template. So I just fold over the seam, right? And line it up exactly where, and it should be somewhere right in here. And I probably will just put a dot. very light one um, so that that's hopefully right <laughs> this is the hard part you just hope that everything is sewn back together and it is right I mean that's pretty much the middle of it so what I'm gonna do is make sure I only have that layer of material because there's a there's a lip on this I'm going to just fold it, just so I can get a little hole going, see where I'm at. But I know I'm a long ways from either end of it. So when I kind of put some tension on this, I know that my hole is here to here. Right? So I'm going to get in here and just cut a little bit. This is the scariest part of the whole thing. Because, you know, we've spent this whole time making this, this pattern, and you don't want it to... You don't want to cut in the wrong place, right? So my hole is here to here. I'm going to cut just a little bit more. Okay. What we're going to end up having to do is have a hole big enough that we can get this through it. I just want to kind of make sure, and yeah, I'm trying to make this hole really no bigger uh, than it needs to be, but big enough to get uh, this through. Okay, so I got that through. I know which way's up because we marked it. Remember I talked about making sure that you mark it, otherwise you're not going to know. Um, and I taped my screws on uh, so I didn't lose them and I kept track of what screw went to what thing. So I think what I'm going to do now, I'm going to clip it. I'm going to put a couple clips on. 
uh, to hold it here because I know I know uh, pretty much that that's where that needs to go and I want this nice and snug um, so I'm gonna have my husband grab me a couple of clips and I'm gonna clip this um, on this bottom uh, metal bar down underneath all right, so, so get me two clips. Let me move this over here too. Okay. So what I did was I put a clip on this this bottom rung down here. I wrapped a cloth uh, that hangs down. You can, and I uh, put a clip, and I put a clip. And I'm gonna get rid of all my little frayed ends and go like I think that's actually a sewing fray. <laughs> but um, so I secured that, and then. And then, and I pulled it taut, because I'm just trying to get this as smooth as possible. And you might get a little bit of a wrinkle here, but then I just kept making my X in the cloth, just a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger, so that I had the least amount of tension here. And then I just pushed this back into place. Um, so now that's back into place, I'm gonna put the screws in. And that piece is secured. This is the, this right here, this metal, is the is the little lever that you pull up to make the seat back go back and it's gonna so this meat and piece of metal has to come out so I know it has to get cut to here because that's the back of it and it's gonna have to get cut up a little bit too so the saving grace here is you're gonna have a pet plastic cover so um, and you can see the indent from that cover how big it was so we have a little bit of wiggle room here. So I cut a hole, that's on there. I'm going to uh, tauten things down by putting some clips on, uh, and then we'll put that piece in place. And I have to cut a hole in this uh, skirting too. Uh, that's where one of our buttons, the one down there on the floor, that big button, uh, we have to put a bracket on, and we gotta cut a hole in this, but I can kinda tell where the hole is in this because I reused my skirting. So my hole's already in the skirting. So that makes that one just a little bit easier. So I've anchored this um, a little bit by clipping on that bottom bar. And this piece will slide over this and it'll get screwed in place. But I can't put it on until I get this piece on because I know this piece overlaps uh, an edge of the plastic. So this is one of those tips, you know, as you're taking everything apart, take lots of pictures, put notes down so you can keep track of what goes back together first. I think putting things back together is probably the hardest part. Um, so this will go on after we get this piece in place. So this bracket right here, I've reattached. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to cut. You can see where my skirting is already cut from because it was already on here. So I gotta cut a hole in this, big enough that I can get this through. We've marked this as top. Once we get it through, we'll pull the cloth down and we'll mount this here. Laid on. And now all we're gonna do is just um, shove that back on. If it goes, I have to look at my other one. Right there, like that. And you just shove it. We'll tap it a little bit. Back on. So this, is a hog ring and this oh, you turn it sideways I gotta turn, yeah we go is a hog ring I don't know what you call it but it's the thing that puts a hog ring tool on. tool and the hog ring you pull it apart a little further oh, okay. so now you can see the hog ring is loaded and so when he squeezes the two handles together it will actually turn that right into a circle and it's got points on the end I don't know if you can see that but the points will pierce the cloth and um, on these pieces that we've pulled through, we put that little piece of plastic. So that's what's gonna be a nice hold. So it's gonna go around the plastic, through the cloth, around the plastic, and around a metal bar under here. So we're gonna do that in several locations. We're gonna pull it taut, and it's gonna keep the top of the seat pulled down tight, and the seat bottom pulled back tight. You can see he's gonna go up under there. He's got the pieces of plastic, and he's gonna squeeze. And you can see that we've got two hog rings in now and it's pulling both the top down and the back and the bottom back yeah and we're going to do that all the way across that bar we need it for one here too we're getting close so now we have to put the arms on 
I didn't want to make the hole uh, for the arm until I had everything pulled down so I know exactly. Uh, so I, I just have a hole punch. I'm gonna find the hole and push. And that gets me my hole, um, pretty much where I need to start cutting. So when you put your arms on, and I'll be right back. When you put your arms on, that piece, it's gotta be big enough, that hole, that that piece can get through the hole. Otherwise you're gonna catch in your material. So the hole's gotta be at least that big. So we'll get cutting slowly and then we'll get this on. Just try. <laughs> if it doesn't go in, cut a little more. Um, none of it's gonna show um, because, you know, this is gonna be smushed up against there. But I can, hear that? That's how you know it's locked in. No, it's not locked in. It went in. It it's passed the material. Oh. Now I should be able to turn it. Oh, did I get it? Yep. I got it. I think I got it. You did. That's it. Yep. Hmm. There's one. Oh. And everything's working. That's the other thing. You know, it's like, okay, yep, that's going down. <laughs> that's going down, that's going up. Feels comfy. You can't tell that the cushion like pulled apart a little bit there.